Austin Harris, welcome to the podcast. Thanks for having me. Everyone says that. Dude, thanks for joining. I mean, that's that's you're supposed to start that way. It makes people feel comfortable. Exactly. Damn you for having me. Darn you. <laughs> Why would How you could do this? you? I did not want to be put on the spot like this. On wax. How could this happen? How could this happen? I prepared some questions. I don't usually do as much preparation for Austin. Uh, for anyone, really. I'm but honored. I'm honored for you to be here. Yeah. Um, like First one's a little silly. There we go. Do you normally like Calvin Harris, the musician? Uh, there's a couple songs that I dig of his. Just because he divulged into his production techniques of how he made it. He has this one called, song called Slide. He's got this really cool synth line, and he like walked through how he did it. So I saw like, okay, so you're not like just cheesy artist type. You're, you you put the work in. He's know? got some goods to show for it. Yeah. Right? Is that because my last name Harris? That's and, exactly why. Just yeah. based on having the name Harris, you somehow could be biased or like. So if we got married, my name would still say the same, which is also, unless I do a hyphen, it's Calvin Harris Harris and Austin Harris dash Harris. Yeah. I was thinking more like you going on tour with him or something like Harris and Harris. Well, that's I, uh, I'm not imagining marriages. I guess you could also start a law firm with him, Harris and Harris, Harris and Harris. Yeah, or like, <laughs> yeah, that, that would be interesting. But did you ever think about that? Like, just because his name is Harris, like on some level, maybe you like him a yes. little bit more. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, a little bit. I definitely had a little bit more favoritism when I heard that one song, uh, Titanium. I think no, that's David Guetta. There was one song he had with uh, Florence and the Machine. I think, a long time ago. This is like 2010, and I don't know why my brain is hazy there. That was like, you know, my eighth grade years. For music, that's a long time. It is. Um, more quite... more people would think it's nepotiz. You know, if I was on his tour and I had the same last name, people would be like, he just got in there because he it's his fucking cousin or something, you know? Which, hey, that happens too. I do have a question about cousins coming up. Oh. Austin and I are cousins. In We're case cousins. Anyone isn't aware of that fact. But I do have a, a media cousin question. Let's get on to something a bit more serious. Some may call it pretentious. I got a music quote. Ooh, I like this. You're one of my music bros. Austin and I jam once a week, post it to the YouTube channel. Um, Rob's usually joining us, but right now it's just the two of us. Give you a quote about music. Art is how we decorate space. Music is how we decorate time. I like that a lot. I really do enjoy that because <clears throat> definitely through COVID or... I don't know if we're allowed to say that word anymore. You know, you have to, you have to go. Oh, Ed, um, I stopped. We're making making music for a while, and I was working more on um, like digital art, like photography and um, like Adobe Illustrator mm. and stuff like that. Well, because I think it was easier to do for me at the time because music is a temporal art. Eh, see, time based on time. So the thing is, the second you hit pause, that art doesn't like cease to exist. So it's something I have to like play over and over and over and over and over like at the same snare for hours to see if it works. So I have to keep going to a ter certain like timestamp. Um, but I like the fact that like digital video and like, well, I guess video is slightly more of a little column A, column B like It's true. Because it uses and audio. Exactly, times, yes. exactly. And also it's a moving frame. Um, I liked stills for a while, just working on stills because I could see the entire image the entire time. And I don't need to constantly listen to the same three seconds of audio over and 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 over, and over again. What age did you become a musician? Like, do you consider the start of your music journey? I, I would say... You were always kind of there. Yeah, I was always kind of there, but I feel like the past seven years, I was a guitarist before. Oh, just the last seven years? I, I'm going to be yourself? honest. Yeah, because like I never wrote songs. 18 and up, only when you're an adult? 18 and up. The second I started working on like actual music and recording, I would consider myself a musician because I would only stick to guitar. And it's like there's a big thing like, I mean, do you consider someone who doesn't write music a musician? Yeah. 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 So, I, I mean. They could be a performance musician. Just exactly. I guess I was a performance musician forever, but I became like a, a creative, you know, annoying creative type of musician who you know is pretentious about his own music but yeah i'd say the past well i guess i expanded into other instruments you know i feel like it, it could be ah oh, you're a drummer and that's all you do or you're a guitarist and that's all you do which is fine and obviously i was a guitarist it's not fine you could you could cast dispersions go ahead <laughs> cast a couple but it's nice to expand well because people don't realize how much their talent for their instrument transfers to other fucking instruments like I started picking up the bass, I was like, oh, I could do this. But then I was a guitarist that played the bass. So everyone's like, you know, you're just a guitarist that plays the bass. Those are clearly like crazy guitar fills on a bass. It took me, what, till 
three years of playing bass to yeah. fully be like, oh. You always can have a lens. They always yeah. can have a lens. But you, like, you consider 18 to be the beginning of the music years. For me, for me personally. Did you ever have a period where you were decorating space, when you were in the more fine arts, when you were into drawing as a child? Uh, yeah, I, I was always looking for creative solutions to do stupid things. Like I always like had ideas for videos, had ideas for like web comics and stuff like that. I just never did it. I had no motivation to fully attack it. Like I even had Ableton when I was in like eighth grade and like a keyboard and I was like, all right, let's do this. And then I didn't do anything. I just, I couldn't figure it out. So I gave up, you know, like most lazy kids do. Yeah. It doesn't seem to necessarily be about options. Cause I don't feel like our musicians have necessarily gotten better just because they can use cheap digital equipment. Yeah. I, I think... I think it gave access to people who would normally be great musicians um, a chance, you know, instead of buying a $100,000 mixing console, you can now get like a $50 audio interface on Amazon. It's there the next day. I think it helped uh, producers more than it helped musicians. Yeah. Right? Because a lot of the instruments are still the same. That's true. Maybe the way you capture the sound has been improved, but... It's largely, yeah, the production company's angle yeah. versus the actual performance angle. It doesn't really change your performance, how hard you're fingering or yeah. blowing uh, to use. <laughs> Interesting choice of two, two words. words. <laughs> <laughs> Striking or well, strumming. Well, you said 18 plus for a musician. True, so true. I, we're, I we're, trying to this cater. This never ended up becoming after dark now. To, a, to an adult music taste, you know. No, but I find it crazy. I, I can't believe you even think 18. I thought you would have said like 12 or something. Maybe. I, I'm being ge overly under generous or, or liberal or conservative, whichever one is less. I think conservative would be. That's the thing people do, though. They want to they wanna like feel like they've earned their stripes. Yeah. I mean, I'm just being honest with like when I actually started creating, I was in bands that I was writing songs at 18. And I was like, okay, yeah, yeah. That's probably when I kind of came into my own because I'm writing other parts for other instruments. Like I'm thinking about what the drum or what the drummer is going to do, what the bassist has to do and what I have to do while making the song. And it's like, oh, okay, then it kind of clicked. Where I'm not listening just to the guitar parts in songs, I'm listening to the entirety of the song and like its yeah. purpose, like what part comes when. You're able to do some like parallel processing. You're not just so. This guy This guy knows how to talk to me, monofocus. parallel processing. Just the monofocus. Have you heard that uh, quote before? That was Basquiat. Jean Basquiat, I've never heard Michael that quote Basquiat. before. I enjoy that quote though. So he comes from the, the fine art world. Uh, I, I could tell. Well, I guess not fine art, because he was sort of like a, like <laughs> non-traditional painter. Oh, gotcha. Was he one of those Pollocks where he just did something crazy and, and stuck? Or is he the one that like paints everything blue? Yeah. You know? Somewhere, yeah, between between Rembrandt and Pollock. I, I don't even know if I could uh, describe him. And we're we're even taking a musical angle to this. So we'll yeah. let him handle decorating the space. We'll have to decorate the time. We'll let um, him deal with that. Of which we're dealing with this podcast. Podcast is a lot like that too. So let's move on to the next thing. Austin's a little bit younger than me. Got ten years to my junior. Um, What's something that people spend money on that you think they spend alcohol. too much? Alcohol. <laughs> without, a, without a fucking doubt, alcohol, instantly. It, it, is, it is unbelievable how much you spend at clubs and bars. Like, yeah. it is egregious. It's like $20 for a drink or fi honestly, $15. It's incredible, isn't it? Not hyperbole, $15 for like a drink. You're like out $200 in a night if you're a heavy drinker or something crazy like that or you're covering other people's drinks. I just... I was just talking to you recently about like the Chipotle burrito index where you're actually like. That's a solid one too. That's $50, but that's also like, you know, 1,200 calories, 1,500 calories. That's a, that's a meal. You're getting. Sustenance. Yeah. Yeah. Not alcohol. Uh, yeah, no. Booze is a whole other thing. And like, God knows you buy one $15 drink. It's probably strong enough to convince you to buy two more $15 drinks. Yeah. So. And, and so on and so on and so on and so on. Could be three times as expensive. Do you feel like you see uh, people like. Instagram stories, bottle service, sparklers, yes. is it that level now? Like, yeah. Because yeah. people your age have it a couple of years maybe to get well, a job, know, we, get we some all, money. and We then got big boy jobs now. Learn how to blow 25, it. big boy jobs. It's not like we're 18 sneaking in like Mike's Hard Lemonade in between our parents' fucking trunk trying to get, you know, it's it's gotten a little bit more than that. But that was like the cheapest possible alcohol you can get. Now we're like in the mid-level of like a lot on a mid-level like alcohol. It's not like we're spending a lot on like a – 18 year old bottle of something like McAllen or something. It's you're, you're right. There's levels to that though. Yeah. Once you get older, then you start doing that whole thing. So it's like one night for $200 of like shitty drinks at a club or $300 for like a vintage, you know, I don't know, but you're not, we're not sipping. No one's sipping alcohol at this age. That's the other thing. You can consume a lot. You can put a lot down. A few years after I started drinking, I started drinking at 21. I remember the IPAs got big. Yeah. Basically right when I started drinking, they started getting Those big. Those are brutal. 
And so by the time I was your age, I feel like that's the way people blew money on alcohol. You couldn't just drink like a, a 40 cent canned beer anymore. No. All of a sudden it was like a $3, 4 or $5. This is imported from fuck, Indi Indiana and this is a specific Yeah, Indiana corn. Pale Ale, that's what it, yeah, <laughs> that's yeah. What it stands for. <laughs> so, oh, that's, yeah, yeah, yeah. But there's always new ways kind of to like, I don't know, sort of g gimmick up, you know, an old thing. Yeah, gimmicks, that's main, it's marketing. What's know? a gimmicky drink now? Seltzers are kind of big. Seltzers right? are big, yeah. It, They're kind of expensive that's, too. That's the gimmick, I guess. That's just been, it's low calorie, you know? It's like, what can we get keto, you know? Because I was doing keto a couple years ago and White Claw was keto. And I was like, oh, nice. But it's like, still, it's still alcohol. It's, it's still sugar. Keto, is it really? Like compared I, to... I think it's very low because it's your, your limit of... Is keto. Your limit of... I don't think it's specifically keto, but I think it's keto friendly. In the sense where it's like six grams of carbs. It's keto adjacent. Keto adjacent. Because 50 grams of carbs is your <laughs> limit when you're doing keto. Keto. I was thinking ketosis. Um, Thank you for humoring me, by the way, spending money, whatnot. I'm trying to like figure out even how to talk. No, about that is money. that is what it's it so is. Hard. I mean, a lot of, I mean, maybe rent, but even then that's like something that's a necessity. I that's, guess just, yeah. Where you but alcohol is huge. I think of it all the time. Everyone goes out yeah. to the bars. I'm like, where's all your money go? Like you have a great job where they're like, yeah, I got no money. Like, where are you budgeting your money? It's like, oh, going out every weekend. Like two times, Friday, Saturday. Like my brother, he's 23, alcohol, going out on the weekends. He's like broke because of it. Not really, but. It sucks because it is kind of like uh, an entry fee into some sort of social club. You yeah. Know, you, you need a place to hang out when you're 23, 27, whatever it may be. You, a lot of times you don't have your house yet, right, for people to congregate at. And then the bar is like subsidizing the community center. Yeah. So yeah. you have There's to no like, YMCA. It's a yeah, no, club, it's club bang or whatever. I don't know what the names of clubs are. <laughs> But it's just one of those things like you're all pooling your money by paying bar fees, basically, which yeah. is tough. Uh, another spending one, and then we'll move on to more of a music, pop culture thing. What's something that people don't spend enough money on that you think people actually should be dropping some dough on? You find <laughs> Protein supplements. No. <laughs> no, that's good. Yeah. I, I guess maybe nutrition. maybe nutrition, vitamins. I, I, yeah. It's just people are not getting them. It's like you'll have. People don't need them yet. Yeah, you're young. You can get away with murder. Yeah, that's true. You can murder your joints and then wonder why your shoulder hurts when you get older. Kind of. I remember like hearing all those comments like when you jump off of something in your twenties, <laughs> an old man would be like, "Oh, I wouldn't, I wouldn't do that." Not but with like, these hips. Yeah. Better watch your knees, young man. You're gonna be in. A <laughs> Fuck you, old man. I I don't need my knees. And then three years later, you're like, ah, my knee clicks for some reason. It's like, oh, is it because you jumped off a abandoned warehouse? Do you know anyone that's taking like? Um, low cost supplements like cheap Chinese protein powder or something. Uh, no, I've like been that. <laughs> like ashwagandha root, <laughs> um, which is supposed to like I guess boost your testosterone, but also make you like like just completely emotionless. Ashwagandha, ashwagandha root. Yeah, it's this new thing they're all doing. It's like to boost your testosterone. Like you're, it's like a brain supplement thing, but I guess it just makes you super emotionless, <laughs> which is like I guess a weird trade off. It's a toughie. Yeah, it's all that alpha, uh, alpha male, alpha brain, Joe Rogan, like mm. pseudoscience, you know, you have to take this ancient Chinese root and it just turns you into like a deadpan, like, you know, what is it? Uh, alpha male, sigma male, you know, just, just looking at people, observing, just. I, I only speak English as a native language. So the alpha, beta, sigma <laughs> thing, it's just totally over my Makes head. no sense. Not Grecian. Yeah. Not, not Grecian enough for my taste. <laughs> um, Super Bowl is coming up. Oh, yeah. It's a halftime show. I was thinking about, you know, obviously music comes to mind always, like these sort of things. Do you know who's playing the Super Bowl halftime show? Uh, I heard and I already forgot. We're like nine days away. Let's, let's, uh, so it's not fully in the news cycle, but I feel like it's been in enough. Is it Kanye West and Taylor Swift? <laughs> yeah. That would be great. Yeah. They should do that, honestly. Um, Usher is the one playing. Oh, I actually had no idea. Yeah. Usher, interesting. Do you care about Usher whatsoever? No, I really, I really <laughs> don't. I really don't. I've heard some weird stuff about all that whole Justin Bieber and who else? Uh, was it Diddy and Usher and uh, Justin Tim or Justin Bieber? And I, I, I care not to dig too deep into that stuff, but there's just weird rumors going on. What, the, uh, was like, Bieber's a plant or something? Not even a plant, just like a lot of like weird mentor underage stuff happening, like weird. Mm. Now, I, I don't want to say grooming and also I don't know it, so obviously, but just a lot of weird stuff like that because like Diddy was really weird with, um, it might have been Usher. And then Usher like took Justin Bieber under his wing and was doing like the same shit. Hmm. 
Well, there's a lot of those things going around with the whole, ever since, like, you know, the can of worms open with, like, Epstein and all those things. They're, like, yeah. very, like, this person's a groomer. This person's a groomer. It's, like. A lot of people going out for pizza. A lot of people going out for pizza and hot dogs, you know? <laughs> a lot of people doing that stuff. Not to make light, but I just, I actually didn't even know that element of it. Obviously, Diddy has kind of caught some headlines. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, <laughs> I do believe that shit, though. I just, I don't know. Because you're like a young pop star, and then these older guys are like, "I'll show you the ropes," and it's like, "Well, what are those ropes? You know, what is what is happening? You know, why you look so uncomfortable next to Diddy?" <laughs> Funny thing about my rope is it's located on my dick. <laughs> you gotta pull it. You gotta climb the rope. But uh, people were talking like, obviously, who might join Usher? You know, that's like the big thing every year. Who's gonna jump out, be the surprise guest? Yeah, it might be Taylor Swift because she's already there, but I doubt it. They don't. They don't think they have enough to pay her for that. No, exactly. They're going to just get away with um, just showing <clears throat> endless cutaways of her like in the crowd. It just worked out like, so perfect, though. Like Travis Kelsey and you know Taylor Swift have been the two biggest things now. And, of course, yeah. that team gets all the way to the Super Bowl. Yeah. I guess he is a maniac, though. He is a very good football player. But I, I stopped caring after fantasy football ended. We did one mm. in our family. And I, I set a lineup, and I just let it sit. And I just didn't touch every, anything at all. And I got in second place, and I was really happy about that. And then I kind of stopped caring about it. Sounds like a classic fantasy football story. It's like, yeah, let it on go on autopilot. Yeah, and, uh, yeah, yeah. I picked Patrick well. Mahomes and then auto picked the rest of it while I was at like a comedy show. Everyone, everyone got so pissed for me auto picking because I got like the best team, and I'm like, well, sucks to suck, guys. You all could auto picked. It's like index investing. Just exactly. Let the Roth IRA, pick. Uh, compounded interest. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Thank you. Coffee, cold coffee. Do you do you believe that there's a difference between consuming cold coffee and warm coffee? Yeah. Yeah. Somewhat. Yeah. What you, difference, like, caffeine absorption? Or, or just, like, the 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 medium. You know, it's like, how do I get my caffeine through, like, a cold espresso shot or, like, a nice warm cup of coffee that you brew yourself or K-cup or whatever? I think the heat of a hot coffee is sort of like a warning to not consume too much. Like, one of the reasons I think people need a piping hot coffee is just to keep us honest. That's a good one. You can slam a cold brew coffee and then just oh, yeah. be questioning all of your life decisions. Doing that right now. It's great. <laughs> I'm really enjoying it. But I do feel like the like, cold coffee feels very like, it's like the difference between a cigar and a cigarette, I think. Yeah, that's kind of- I think a cigar is like a, like a warm cup of coffee. It's habitual. You know, you can kind of relax and in the morning. But I feel like a cold cup of coffee is like, fuck, I'm late for work. I got to get out of the house. For me, it's like, oh shit, I got to get to James's house to record this podcast, get a cold coffee on the way, slam most of it. You know, it's just- like, you know, you see people shaking outside cold, right. smoking a cigarette opposed to someone who's like lounging in a big chaise chair, you know, puffing on a cigar with a, a robe on, you know. Or a vape, you know. Or Some a vape. Sort of or a vape. USB vaporizer for yeah. tobacco or something. <laughs> cold coffee. Uh, with the or vape. maybe that nowadays, maybe you can get like a USB freebaser for tobacco. You can yeah, just, just sprinkle a little you can freebase tobacco a and freebase it. <laughs> Whatever freebasing even is, I don't know. I, um, it's I've heard it too long, and I'm too afraid to ask what freebasing is at this point. Yeah, it's it almost sounds like Freemason. Yeah, freebasin. Free the free <laughs> part of the free basin movement. Been thinking about joining the freebasins. I think Usher's in the freebasins, actually, if I'm not mistaken. I thought I heard that too. But I, I was just reading like articles on like who might join. Little John, maybe Luda. I would love to see Little John. Little John's like, freebasing. I know for a fact he's freebasing. <laughs> Still don't know what it is, but it he's just, doing it. it he's be, like, okay. Do you guys want a free base? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Big glasses on. Um, was Ludacris in Fast and the Furious 10? Uh, I don't know if he's in 10, but he was in a bunch of them. Okay. He, he is like another guy in that movie. He was kind of a character, right? Yeah. I, I don't know if he was I need in the early to see ones. five of them. I'm like so out of the loop. But. Likewise. I think after once they started using magnets to pull cars to semi-trucks, I was like, I don't think... Uh, this is my movie anymore. That's some free basonry. Using yeah. magnets. That's a What's major the... <laughs> free basin thing. They love using magnets. Uh, very pole. Very connected by poles. <laughs> free pole in it. Uh, the Super Bowl halftime show, though, like, I, what is your general feeling on it? As a musician, I guess, specifically. It, give me that perspective. Big, I, like, what are they doing? Yeah, it's it's big. It's just one of the biggest performances. Like, you got Prince doing Purple Rain. It starts raining, you know? And it's like, <laughs> that was pretty intense. It's... The most watched program that year, pretty sure. Um, I don't know if it's the viewership's been dwindling each year, but people watch the ads too. But I, it's it's a giant performance that I th think is very. You get a lot of eyes on you, but you're also already like one of the biggest artists going in. It's not like they're taking like it's, I don't know an sort of indie artist putting up there. You know, like the 1975. They're not that indie, but you know. I know what you mean. It's sort of a confirmation bias thing where exactly like, we're only going to see people we know. Obviously, they probably try to make like different demographics and genders happy. Yeah, 
That was crazy. Last year, Rihanna did it while pregnant. That was pretty yeah. cool. Everyone's was like, why is she moving so slow? Why is she wearing such a big puffy coat? She's like chained to a, <laughs> a, a, like a riser in the sky. Yeah. Was... She's doing like a one-legged dancing. Like, yeah, yeah. Not really like moving from her uh, pivot point. I love that. Like the next day, everyone's like, why is she not moving? And then it's like, oh, she's pregnant. And we find out like the next day. No, little do we know it was like a way to stimulate child production in the country. So yeah, like, yeah. She's like, everyone's got to get pregnant now. Get the most famous pregnant artist up on that stage <laughs> now. Usher has the ability to make you pregnant just from his eyesight. By so. proxy, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just by just singing Just by to you. looking at the guy. Yeah. He's got that sex appeal. But he's like, he's a Las Vegas uh, residency artist now. You know, he's just doing shows in Usher? Vegas. Yeah. He's kind of like- Is he on, in the dome? Is he in the Globo dome? I don't think he made it to the sphere. But the uh, sphere. <laughs> he's got like the Celine Dion thing going on now. Where really? he like is sort of playing the hits to like overly intoxicated people who are in for the weekend. If it works, it works, right? It gets you good practice. I yeah. mean, maybe he'll release an album- Five years from now. He's like, I'm working on new stuff. They're like, no, play old stuff. I have no idea. I mean, he certainly can. Um, he is kind of like a safe artist in that respect, though. Like, he's got this major contract right now. Like, oh, yeah. In- playing shows continually in Vegas. And I'm sure, like, the promoter for the Super Bowl caught his show in Vegas because there's some rich person. And it was yeah. like Smoking cigars in the back of the club, bringing mm-hmm. back to cigars. He's like, like, we should make love in this club, not just smoke cigars in the club. We should make love in the club. (laughs) Then Usher comes up all of a sudden. We were just telling about this. They should try an indie band or like a small time artist though. Have like an opener. Maybe interesting. Yeah, like a three minute opener. Yeah. Because what do they give them? Like 12, 15 minutes? It's kind of a decent set, right? Yeah, and they do melodies. Or they don't, or melody? Is that what they're called? Medley. Medley. They do like medleys of their songs where it's like just the choruses of all their songs mashed to mashed together. You're like, okay, interesting. Do you think you would enjoy it more if they like hedged their bets and they had one great band that everyone knew? Like, I'm trying to give a joke, Aerosmith. Uh, <laughs> it's always the old ones too. Like they're all like 90. It's no, like, I'll, I'll say let's re- get Guns N' Roses up there. And yeah, I know, it's like, bad. I'll, give, I'll give a real answer from my perspective. It's like a reunited Talking Heads show or something. Like they somehow had Talking Heads, That's David a- Byrne, Full Suit. But then they also yeah. had like, a new band, like an opening band, like you're saying, and they can go back and forth. So yeah, like as much as I don't like them, Greta Van Fleet, like it would be them, and like Led Zeppelin would be interesting. But or do you think you'd enjoy if it was two obscure bands, almost like a battle of the bands thing? Where that would be kind of cool. Two bands on the come up, desperate as hell, and you have to vote. You have to vote for which one you like better. The other one gets cast into a fire. But that's the thing, though. <laughs> After they all die, they'll become infinitely more famous because oh, yeah. it's like the band that got cast in the fire during Super Bowl. That's music 101. Yeah, is dying. It, honestly, yeah, I, genuinely. Like as much as I really enjoy Mac Miller and I do like Mac Miller, the amount of people that I've heard listen to Mac Miller exploded after he passed away. He's a great dyer. He was a great dyer. Yeah, he did same a great with uh, Hers, dying. the band called Hers. Like I, I've mm. never heard of them. And then the second they died, I was like, oh, this band's really cool. I checked it out on Spotify. I was like, wow. I got it in my Discover Weekly, and then I was like, oh, these guys died. And that's like an ongoing joke. Like the Tame and Paula. Like, did you know Tame and Paula is only one person? Like, everyone knows that at this point. It's like one of those like music memes where, like, yeah, it has become listening that. to hers and then showing your friends hers, and then everyone's going, you know, they died in a car accident, right? It's like that same type of like meme, I guess. They've gotten some good mileage out of that Tame and Paula material. It's funny. Kevin Parker should consider an untimely passing, though. Oh, God, yeah. That, really that'd be should. brutal. I mean, he's got enough out, but. And the, well, the hard thing is that every time it comes out with more shit, it's good. I'm like, oh, I'm waiting for it to happen. Like I do with most artists. I'm like, okay, I'm afraid. Is this the album that's going to make me like not like this person yeah. anymore? Because there's like that, you know, once you get a certain level of fame, you lose that edge of like trying to be, you get the little Kanye sphere. You know, you become Kanye, you're amazing. And then you hit that like, I'm, I'm God. And then his music sucks shit. And then, he, you know, you got a meteoric rise. It, it is a... Uh... You know, it's a classic mistake to claim you're bigger than Jesus, to somehow go for Christianity. Once you attack way. America's homeland, you know, you, <laughs> their, their home their home belief, you're screwed. I, I get how people do that. Like, they think that they have to be bigger than God, but what they really need to help their career is to go meet God, to kill, to, to die. <laughs> and that is what, that's the major confusion, I feel like. There's like, there's something about my career that necessitates <laughs> the Lord Jesus Christ. And it's not that you... As the artist, have become bigger than Jesus. It's you need to go you, meet your you maker. Go see him. So your catalog has uh, yeah. sales into pre- perpetuity, right? Your family gets syndication. I don't know if it's syndication when it comes with music, but. All this to say, I hope Usher thinks about this for his show. You know, if he really wanted to help album sales for himself. Oh, Nothing my God. Nothing like a Could Super you Bowl halftime, Suicide? untimely yeah. demise. He's doing like the Michael Jackson pose and he just fucking <laughs> lights on fire. He's gone. That's it. He's ushering in a new era of music hey. by lighting himself on fire. 
Especially you can get like <laughs> background dancers are pouring gasoline on him. Yeah, you know? it would be like that. They're all dancing and they're just splashing him and he's like getting splashed. And they could they... do cross promotion. Yeah, it's like a scene from Zoolander. He's holding a of... bottle of effing. You know, he's holding a bottle of uh, something, of uh, Casamigos. He should absolutely have a product. Yeah. Right. No, he can't just pass. It can't just be about the back sales of the catalog, whatever. Worth... <laughs> he's got to have a physical item. What would his, what would his alcohol be called? Usher? Yeah. Woo. I hope it would be... It would be something with a club, obviously. I was, I was thinking that too because it's going to be sold in I clubs. I want to say uh, red rope, red rope. Yeah, like a, like a yeah. oh red rope worth dying, sort of worth dying for, you know, because he's holding it as he's getting burned at the stake. <laughs> you know, he says he thinks he's bigger than G. You know, he'll attach himself to a crucifix and then being lit on fire holding the bottle. Or how about front row? Front row's good too because he's an usher. He's bringing people to their row. That's a, oh fuck, that's a good one. You should get into marketing. <laughs> <laughs> this whole podcast is going to end just once I come up with a sustainable product line. Basically, I mean these are all Second, trademarked. These are all trademarked I can come up because with sustainable product. You have a date on the bottom <laughs> in the description below. <laughs> all right. Well, we'll, well, we still have like some time to come up with Super Bowl halftime stuff. Yeah. We'll have to, uh, keep churning butter. I don't know. We'll figure it out. That it'll, it'll just be another one that, that goes by without much fanfare. What are you excited about right now? Just in general, warm weather. Yeah, first thing that comes to my mind. First thing, it's forty out. I'm loving it. It was like zero for the past week, and I was like, "Wow, this blows." You know, you forget like it gets cold here. You know, usually in the summer it's nice, but yeah, warm weather. It's blue skies. That is huge for me. I forget like how much that is a dictation on how my mood is and how I feel. Do you allow yourself to think about warm weather like the whole winter, or do you like no? I forget. When do you allow? Because we're at the very beginning of February. Yes, I'm recording this. Did you just recently like give yourself? permission to yes. start like fucking wanting it once it was like 45 or 50 yesterday or two days ago that's when i was like all right we're back we're back <laughs> we're back that's that's when i pretty much gave myself the go ahead to yeah. start getting excited i don't do that until it's like february or even like march you just need a taste yeah and you just want a little taste a little bit a little bit well, it's good. You're going on uh, spring break at some point, too, right? At some point. So that'll, that'll be nice. You, you legitimately have a reason to look forward to warmer weather. Yes. Because it's like a month away now. Yeah, because usually we leave and we come back and it's like, oh, are you warm? I'm like, oh, nice. Yeah. It's hard not to be. I it's hard not that. to be excited. What are you excited for? You know, I got some new camera equipment. Using one of them today. Very excited about that. Camera. It's... Camera three. Camera. Camera three. I don't know what number you it's camera nine actually i'm just not going to use cameras one through six so yeah seven eight nine you got to leave that empty space for future when you you know <laughs> just gather over, more supplies overproducing the <laughs> heck out of this no i'm excited to, to try those though um they have better light sensitivity for our jams specifically we shoot in like in the dark um, i like those jams so i like playing with that yeah, that's a biggie. That's a biggie. I still got some lights that I haven't fully flushed out. I got like a spotlight attachment that I've been using a lot. Again, for oh, with jams. like the, with the little gobos. With yeah, the, yeah. yeah know. You know all that. I've experienced it. So I'm, I'm, uh, I'm just excited to keep using that stuff. Honestly, I have uh, finally made some headways on like getting rid of some things. That's always huge. Having more space to put new stuff or even old stuff that you haven't had room for is great. I just, I want uh, some peace of mind. You know, in I've been doing a lot of work um, around like my mindset as it relates to money. And I kind of realized that I was holding on to a lot of things, at least in part because on some level I felt like I could not replace those things. Mm. Like I have a lot of older things and family belongings and things from different generations and people. And I feel like I have to respect those old relationships or those people maybe who are not even, uh, you know, no longer alive. Um, but it gives you the feeling like I, that stuff can't be replaced, right? If it's like an heirloom or if it's a belonging of someone that I yeah. had a relationship with, like I'm kind of holding on to the past in a way. It's hard. It's a, it's a double-edged sword there because you get rid of it, but it's also you don't think about it until you see it again. Like you're not thinking about like I don't want to give any examples to sound any I don't know can't even come up with anything. But a, a grandfather's well, a watch is something nice you can pass down. But I, or like a it's like a, end tables or clamp. like pillowcases. It's pillowcases, like, it's, it's stuff exactly. Like that. Stuff that you wouldn't use. I'm not going to use my grandmother's old pillowcase. Uh, no offense to grandma. Love you. Love you. <laughs> Love you up there. Um, but you know what I mean? Like I, I wouldn't use it, but it was something that was hers and she's not around anymore. So you'd want to hold on to it. But it's like, what use are you going to have of it? Like you have memories of her. It, it's hard. It's well, a pillow, hard. Pillowcase you fill with doorknobs beats someone to death. With that it, is true. Or which you, would help their music career. So that yeah. could be a pillowcase could be. Walk in a robber, leave a part. musician. That's just how it works <laughs> at my house. 
No, it's just something I'd be excited because I've actually made some headway on getting rid of the things. And that's good. That's, it's like, healthy. It's hard, but it's healthy. Yeah. Because you, th- you don't think about it. You're not using it. And it's just taking up space. And it's, I don't know. I've realized I actually do think about it. Just by having something in your line of sight, it's that's somehow true. taking up my RAM. Yeah. Um, because I'm kind of like filled out. I have a decent amount of square footage that I live in. This studio being, you know, one of the places. It's, um, it's a nice it's something free space. That needs some sort of like curation um, or grooming if you were going to use P. Diddy's. Going, going back to P. Diddy, of course. Terminology. But I finally made some headway. I actually requested like a new trash can from the city of Chicago too. Oh, and nice. they brought it in like two days. I was like, okay, so this city isn't totally screwed up. <laughs> they <laughs> that, can that's still your throw things out. That's your barometer. You're like, all right, how fast can trash new trash can get to me? And it's like three days. You're like, fuck, we got to get the bomb shelter going. Well, I mean, uh, intellectually, it's it's fitting. They treat us like garbage. So they should have good streets and sanitation work, I suppose. Yeah. But um, no, it's been great. I'm excited to just have like clear space. Um, to, to spend more time shooting, filling the space that I do have uh, with artistic projects or, yeah. you know, with things that are more, I think, aligned with the future. I, part of it is like a past future thing all the time. Yeah. Like the space that you're in, uh, obviously you're always experiencing that space within the present, but uh, it's so much easier for that space to be filled with items from the past um, versus things from the future because things in the future a lot of times live in your mind, right? So they could be in your True, headspace. Like goals. But yeah, a completed goal isn't going to be physically manifested because no. that's likely it's not, not there yet. Yeah, you unless you have a bunch of lumber, it. yeah, that you're going to whittle into something else, right? Or split the logs out back. That's a goal I can get into. Dodge, <laughs> Dodge Ram. <laughs> um, yeah, that's that's the current mindset. But also excited about basketball. Just of course the weather. Yeah. I'm a huge, huge gardener, so I can't wait for it to get warm. Ooh, I'm excited. Yeah, that's going to be nice, seeing yeah. all the plants. I love seeing, like, mm-hmm. the evolution of your plants in your backyard. As I come in, I'm like, everything's kind of dead. Or it's like bushes, and then I come back, and it's like blooming flowers. I'm like, shit, that happened overnight. Yeah. No, it does. It, because it, I see you weekly, so there's totally. a lot of progress. You're like, yeah, I'm just planting these rose bushes, and I come back the next Tuesday. I was like, oh, there's <laughs> full roses in bloom. That's cool. Yeah. Even the evergreens, like the yew, the, the boxwood, like that stuff, all of a sudden we're just in March, basically. Just yeah. have a nice, you know, frosty, fluffy green top on it, which is a good feeling. Yeah. Let's talk about um, playing characters online. Ooh, I like that. So I've been talking about the money content a little bit. I recently released some videos. I had like a mustache, pinstripe suit. It was... Mixing it up. I was like trying to get into this character. I couldn't fully do it though, to be honest. I just like it's could hard. Not do it's it. it's that it's that step of you getting fully into it is the thing that does it. But it's like if you have any hesitation of what it is, then I think you lose it. I'm not quite there yet either, but I, I feel like that's you have to kind of lose yourself into the character. But the hard part is like how far do you go? You know? Do do you become like a Stephen Colbert? Which is a good thing. I guess he did pretty successful. Like where you say things you don't feel constantly. You know, because that's complete opposite of who he is. Is on the Colbert Report. That's not you know. I think you have to take it all the way. You, you gotta you gotta push yourself. I think that's the hard part why people don't do it because you can't you just you can't pull back at all because then you start letting shit go through. You just gotta fully like, I'm this person. You know, like you have to method act. You know, you gotta be Heath Ledger exactly or Jared Leto. Fucking dork. <laughs> I don't know, but do you, do you feel like that's how people do it for, like, online personas, that they're, like, kind of method acting? They There's a lot of people that are zone? influencers that are kind of doing that, but they're, it's still, it's not even, like, they're not, they're not, they're pretending to be an ideal version of themselves, which I mm. feel is, like, tricky, and that's why all these people go fucking crazy after, like, two, three years of doing this stuff. It's because it's, like, it's, it's like you're playing a character which is yourself, which I feel is, like, a dangerous game to play. I guess I would never do that. I would do, obviously, with my music career, I'm aiming to do that is play a character, but... This is a good point, because I was yes. releasing stuff under my name, James Smith Gratton, and you were talking about being a character yeah. with habits. Yes, So yeah. there's a little delineation between your own identity and the Yeah, it's, it's not me. It's a, it's an ideal person who I want to be, but it's also, like, a corny version of someone who I want to be. Like, not who, mm-hmm. who I want to be to almost a, a negative degree. Like, someone who is habitual with everything they do, hence the name, also someone who's like smooth, very charming with everything they do constantly. Like everything's like a pickup line or everything's like a this mm-hmm. and this and this and this. Like you have every one liner underneath your belt, you know, just like this fake human that just does not exist, which it'll be interesting to see how I pull that off. But have you done anything to sort of channel those, those uh, ways of being? Um, I've, I've dress a little. Right? Yeah. Oh yeah. Dress for sure. Like I bought, a, I recently bought a turtleneck literally for that exact reason, uh. but 
I should have wore it to the pod. Um, that would have been interesting. We well, got we got other opportunities. We there. got other opportunities to do that. But I, def- definitely the way uh, what's his face. Um, Kevin Parker, Tame Impala. Kevin Parker, Tame Impala. Is that who you're talking about? No, uh, Robert, <laughs> not Robert Downey Jr. Help me out here, old guy. Robert uh, Townsend. The, the oh, De Niro. Thank you, thank you. Based off the face, the he face. got it. Yeah, um, <laughs> he he studies the shoes that his character plays. Literally, like, what shoes is he walking in? Like, are they uncomfortable? You know, that's how you get, really get into a character. And I feel clothes is huge. Like, you wear clothes, you feel a different level of confidence. Like, if you're wearing just sweatpants out, you're like, whatever. Oh but man, if you put on a pair of like nice jeans and like a designer shirt or something like you feel like a different person you're like i, I know i look good you so know when i was recording i had the suit on i had the tie the dress shirt the suit but i was not wearing fancy shoes that's where you're missing so I was it. missing it out yeah you have to wear the uncomfortable dress shoes so then you know you're like yeah these are uncomfortable this is uh we're in the real business now oh man i was going top down just because we we're doing but know, hey that's shooting. just robert de niro though maybe Bottom maybe up. you like you know, whatever's on your torso, maybe that dictates your, your shoulder mobility. Am I limited by a suit? Then I know, you know. It, it's probably part of the equation, but I, I have to follow the De Niro method here. The, uh, it doesn't hurt. The it works bottom for him. up shoe method of method acting, basically. Well, it's how your feet hit the ground, you know, it's how you ground yourself. Yeah. Well, he's, I mean, half his roles, he's curb stomping someone, too. So yeah, it's like very he, relevant. Do you see that clip in The Irishman where he's like 95 years old in real life, but he has to like imitate curb stomping someone? So he's like, he's like this. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and it's like they could do all the AI to his face, but you're not hiding like the slow, rigid movements of an 85 year old man. Yeah. He, why would they do that? Why would they make him try to play a like a 40 year old? That's ridiculous. What is it? Is it the shoulders that give it away? In yeah, the it's old the man? shoulders and like the, the, the pain boxy. face when he moves. You know, mm-hmm. he's like, you know, like, uh, like how is it? It's not that much. Like you don't. He doesn't show anger. He shows pain. Like this hurts. I don't have any mobility in my body. He's like. Ugh. So when a character screams, "It hurts me," then it hurts you. He yeah. actually feels he that means way. It. He means it. He means situation, it. which usually we'll just get like a body double for that one scene. You know, someone who's very of similar width. You know, that's like <laughs> thirty-five. He's doing like jujitsu moves. He's got to be like an arm bar. You know. Ah, oh, fuck! That's making me crack up. I'm just thinking of like if they had somehow, yeah, crop that shot. But it was, it was like, Scor- Scorsese. He's like, I need Robert De Niro. It's like you realize you're making him play a four. He can act it right for sure, and they could do AI to his face and whatever, and it looks great probably. But you're not hiding. It's just like the way an 85-year-old man moves. You're like, that's an 85-year-old man. You can't hide that. Yeah. Like the, the, the grunt he gets when he stands up on a chair, you know, you're going, <clears throat> like, you can't hide that. I'm so wishing they just, yeah, would have used a, a 17-year-old, like, you know, from the neck down, basically. Yeah. Like, cut really quickly back and forth. Like, yeah, you see the necklines not match. Not know? even close. Yeah. yeah that would have like, been great. Has, has that happened in a movie? I'm trying to think if there's been some sort of substitution. Oh, yeah. I, the... Back to the Future, I think, had one where it was a completely different actor, but they just put him upside down. I think like, really? the dad in the second or third movie is a completely different actor. Was he have abs in the second one? Or no, I think it? they just tried to hide that it was a different guy by putting more makeup on and him being upside down so people wouldn't recognize it was like not the same guy. Hmm. I forgot the guy's name. They obscured the... Because they, they had an actual actor difference, right? It's not yeah. Like change. I remember Reno 911, there was some joke oh like God. that too where like they're showing uh, two of the main characters having like... Or they're, oh no, it's maybe a fake out. I was gonna say they try to show him having sex in a hotel room, but all of a sudden they're like massively jacked. Like, <laughs> the dude, like it goes from a skinny, terrible guy to like some jacked dude. And <laughs> obviously a beautiful, voluptuous woman. I, I love those gags so much. I, lo- I love yeah. those gags. I love shows it's, that lean into that shit. I, it's just too funny to me. I love that. It's pretty over the top. Yeah, but you know. Or like the ones where like someone gets thrown and it's clearly a rag doll, where yeah, like their wig too. flies off. I, I, I love that stuff. I'm a sucker for that every time. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll have to keep looking out for tips on uh, how to play characters, you know, how to get into the... Yeah, I think just commitment. I think just committing to it and realizing, like, this is, like, writing out... Because I did that. I wrote out who my character would be. And now it's more of a, like, I need practice, like, manifesting that. I'm like, you know, what would they say? What would they post? What shoes would they wear? You know? Eh, what shoes would they wear? New shoes? Um... That's that's Those good shoes, though. You, maybe old vintage shoes. The things know. you wrote out. Yeah. Tell me about that process a little bit. Was it from the POV? Like it was the I POV of this. me. I am that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I am. I am. And then I had people like I had a bunch of friends. Who would they suspect this person to do? Like very Johnny Bravo esque character, mm-hmm. but without maybe. Uh, that's the thing though. Do I want to lean into like him swinging and missing for every chance he gets at like every person he tries to hit on? Because that's like the Johnny Bravo thing. He never gets. Or do I? You know, am I successful in that? you know, facet. Yeah. But that's another thing. So I had a bunch of people write on a P 
piece of paper and I have that somewhere in my room that I lost. I have to go find that again. But It's a good exercise. Yeah, like what would you want people to think of you? And then at this point, what do other people think of the character? It, it gets confusing. Character work is obviously very hard and people no, practice it is. It constantly. Step one, you have to figure out what you're trying to inhabit or manifest. And then you have to channel it. You actually have to go there, which yeah. gives you all the nuance. Yeah. So the adjectives are just the first part of it. Then you actually have to get what movements, what sort of like language will help you embody those habits. Yeah, like what type of like habits or like what, what weird things you do as you set, you know, how people like hold themselves. Do you put your, you know, yeah. you have to get really far into it probably, or you could probably just wing it and do a good job. I have no idea. I haven't done it yet, but. I could say winging it, not easy. No. I think you have to have it down. You have to come up with some yeah. sort of deep method acting protocol. Um, speaking of names. I, was, I, to, I talked to you recently about how our jams, we don't like really have a name for it. We don't. It's just jam journals or like, yeah. yeah. Which I, I'm not. I've even stopped using the jam journal. I just call it like a jam now. Yeah, you've been naming them, which I dig. It, just as a way to keep track in a way. Because like, yeah. I don't want it to just be like jam 92. That is jam funny though, because Rob is like, dude, I love uh, jam 8. I'm like, no idea what that is. Yes. Like, I, I haven't heard that in a while. Or... It, without a name on it, it's really hard. Yeah. Just for our purposes. But... Um, how do you feel like having a name changes it? Do you, do you mean like like the project, a name for the project? Yeah. Yeah. Well, it, it, it gives you um, a surface level idea of what the project is. You know, like Jam Journal already, you're like, well, this is clearly, we're just, we click record and we go. You know, it's not like, I don't know, uh, structured Jam time at first thing came in my head but like it is a very loose jam is what it is it's a jam journal you know it's not like a it's a journal entry you know you're not editing what your journal entries say you just write it down you just get your ideas down on a piece of paper um but i think naming it definitely you know you like if put yourself in a box in a good way or a bad way i was gonna ask if our jam name was minotaur yeah or something we had some sort of like for the music gothic. heads out there i'd be using a lot of clon pedals Three guitarists laughed at that. Everyone else said, what the fuck is he talking about? You probably got it. Maybe 30% of guitarists. Or I guess more, that's more of a centaur. So I'm wrong on two different no, levels. No, no, you got it. <laughs> but there's a, there's a phenomenon. Like if we were if we were called like Alpha Charge or something. Yeah, it's like gonna we be, wouldn't be playing be soft metal. songs. We're going to be yeah, playing like change heavy shit. Even how we felt about the, the types of stuff that we, we picked. And a lot of people obviously do that by design. They're like, you know. We are Satan's penis, and you know they they play stuff. Can Cannibal Corpse is the biggest one that immediately comes to mind. That's Cannibal like Corpse, heavy, heavy band, heavy, <laughs> and their songs are brutal. Like even the I, I can't say half the titles of their. I mean, just look at just look it up at this point. But you you get kind of like boxed in. in a way. Yeah, yeah. Like Coldplay, I don't imagine Coldplay doing like you know Raining Blood by Slayer. You know, I imagine Coldplay like Radiohead esque. You know, arpeggios in the background and going like. You know, high pitched vocals with big reverb on it, you know, or something. Not, you know, screeching guitar solos. It's just the way it is. It is. I've been enjoying it. Do you feel like it has made it more difficult or? No, nah, not really. I enjoy constantly. it because it gives okay. us a, uh, well, because we mix up the genre every time. Yeah. It really, we do play a lot of different genres. We do. It's like, what type of genre? No, I don't, couldn't tell you. You know, one we're doing sludge death metal, and then one we're doing like light fusion jazz. You know, it's like, well, there's no in between there. <laughs> uh, okay, I have this. Help me come up with reasons why now is the best time in history to be a musician. Accessibility. Accessibility. Back in the day, you Producer, had producer, consumer, both. All. Okay. Easiest to get music. Like you could just type in YouTube and you get to say, you know, name a song, and it's either on Spotify or in music YouTube for free, usually. Um, the gear is a lot cheaper. It's just, it's just, I think every, it's now is the best time, at least to get to a level you'd like. But like, I'd say there's oversaturation of musicians, which makes you harder and harder for you to stand out hmm. because there's so many other people with a very similar idea. I don't know, double-edged sword again. But I, I think now is the best time to be a musician because of the technology. I mean, AI at this point mixes music for you. you yeah, know, that's it. a big one. You click the master button and it's done. Or Some of the post-production stuff, it really, really doesn't matter to a lot of people, to be honest. Plus, people right? are liking lo-fi music anyways. You know, people have come completely full circle where it's like, I want the cleanest possible track. And now it's like, I'll take a distorted guitar with noise in it the entire song. I, I don't care, you know? 
I'm trying to think that's been going on a little bit of time. Um, lo-fi. Yeah, lo-fi is huge now. Or it kind of dwindled a little bit, but it less like there's a specific genre like lo-fi hip hop. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was thinking. And that's kind of dwindled a little bit. It still exists, but it's not as huge as it was in like 18, 19, 20. That was right. like the genre. It had its moment. I do. I'm gonna skip to another question quickly. Actually, was, is, what genre is winning right now? I felt like I understood like the early 2000s. It was like a rap hip hop thing. Yeah, I and think then it's still 2010s, rap. It's like it's it was still EDM. Rap. Yeah, EDM and rap for sure. But did oh, did we switch back to rap? Like right I feel like there's just more hit? genres now. I, that's the hard part is that there's like so many genres, like an unbelievable amount that I've never heard before. True, and and especially with the more people becoming musicians, like you're saying, I'm sure that sort of like makes people want to sort of like grab their own genre but there's still got to be one that's like quote winning that's doing the best and it could be that right now we're yeah. in this period of opportunity where one hasn't quite stepped into the limelight for yet. now i can't really think of anything besides i just hear most people listen to rap right now a lot of rap but there might be one well that as i'm driving home i'm like ah that's a perfect one but like i don't know like deconstructed deconstructed music has been one like billy eilish off the top of my head we're like there's not a lot of like, some songs there's no chords. It's like a drum track bass in her vocals. Music minimalism sort of. Like mu minimalism for sure. Or like Dua Lipa even, or like, uh, I'm trying to think of that one album, Future Nostalgia, but that came out a couple years ago. It's hard, I feel like it's a, it's a very big moving target, but it's very much like, it's less of genres and who, like it's people at this point, because they've gotten so big, like The Weeknd and like, you know, I mean obviously oh, this is good. Swift. It's, it's definitely people. It's a cult. I'm seeing it as a cult of personality thing. Then yeah, 100%. it's less important what the genre is. It's more important about the the arc of the artist. Maybe yeah, you have like 57 million people listening to the weekend, uh, or on Spotify monthly listeners. So within every 30 days, there has been 57 million people listening to the weekend, and it could be more by the time I say this. It might be like 70 something. I actually don't remember, but um, yeah, I think it's more just like who do you follow, and rather like I know EDM is still huge. All of my friends listen to EDM. A lot of them do. No, but fascinatingly, on, on your point of um, the personalities being so important, social media profiles are huge now. Yes. Where we get an insight into the artist's life and then obviously become obsessed with their path, their journey. Yeah. Uh, Travis Scott being a major artist, marrying into like the Kardashian oh, family. Yeah, and huge, huge, huge. Maybe not marrying in, but somehow being involved as a part of like, Isn't he a married marketing to, campaign. He's married to one of them. He's married to a Jenner, I think. Their marriages mean nothing. I have no idea. But the point is... <laughs> It's it's this era specifically right after we had all these EDM artists who were actually unknown. They they I mean, hid Mouse, their faces. Dead Mouse wore a fucking. They hat. wore masks. Yeah, or the mask, the big head. Daft Punk. Daft Punk. Yeah. Um, so we went from like a ten year period where it was kind Marshmallow. of Marshmallow. Yes, That's another guy who hides his face. Where people were famous, they still built a brand. It was still kind of about identity in a way, or, mm -hmm. or at least some sort of signature sound. Because a lot of times, I feel like the electronic artists would get big based on the sort of beeps and boops they could kind yeah, of. Yeah, it is weird equation. though. Once you listen long enough, you're like, "Oh shit!" I can definitely hear like Skrillex has a certain, you know, sound he likes to use, and you can tell even if it's like a different sound, you can tell it's Skrillex or Dead Mouse too. Is like, it's weird. It's weird once you like get into it and you can understand like the different like differences between like two bleeps and bloops. You're like, "Wow, okay, well, I'm definitely in it now." So you had that where people were famous on without even sight of their personality and now like you you need a personality and you probably need some sort of social media campaign going right with your yeah. music and then i don't know it's what do you want to call it? pop social media is that the big genre now this yeah point? yeah I don't I don't, yeah like olivia rodrigo pop personalities maybe would be the way yeah, yeah. olivia rodrigo it's honestly example. based off of people now then it is really genres because there's no i don't know spotify you can listen to anything so i think that's just like a very wider range of music you can listen to which is accessibility you know you could anyone can post on spotify at this point with distro can distribute uh, distribution apps so maybe part of it too is just like what's obvious and easy you talk about the weekend being so big like yeah. people maybe listen to more music on the weekend and they're like oh it's the weekend it's what, the weekend what should i listen to they look down and just like are brainwashed to write yeah they just weekend. type in weekend yeah weekend music. <laughs> they're screaming into their phone siri you know so we definitely don't want to be too clever when naming your your act right now. It seems. Exactly. Just give the people what they freaking want and are already thinking of. 
Um, just to cap up why this is the best time in history to be a musician, though. I'm trying to think. What else? What else is there? Uh, also, good headphones. Oh, yeah. Sick headphones. That's an accessibility thing. It's kind of along the line of yeah. what you were saying. It's, there's accessibility in multiple ways. It's like, one, uh, lessons. You know, you can do lessons through Zoom YouTube with an actual human. Stuff or too. you can watch videos. You can yeah. watch videos and follow along. You can get lessons for literally any instrument you want. Like, I want to learn how to play the balalaika. You can go on YouTube. There's like 52 hours of balalaika lessons. You're like, oh, I never knew I wanted to learn that, you know? It, it's just stuff you'll never, oh, well, you will, but like you could have never had before. Um, on to something we've never had before and specifically how we consume media content. Have you seen the Apple Vision Pro headset? Uh, I've seen it. I, I, it looks interesting. It's, it, I'm already getting your tone just from like, I've seen it. I just, I don't, I don't know. I have to try it out, but I bet it's going to be cool you know, when we try it out eventually, when it becomes somewhat affordable and not $700,000. Do you know so how much it costs? Uh, 3500 right? Or I, think it's, I, I have no idea. I'm asking. I believe, I, yeah, it's it's expensive. Thousands. Yeah. That's that's a pretty high ceiling to get in because like a, even like it's a tough. VR, buying a computer, a new brand new PC and a VR headset, to, it's like $2,000 for a very great solid PC and then another $800. You're at $2,800 at least for a full VR setup. It's a heavy lift. It's a heavy lift, involved. yeah. And then on top of that, or doing the uh, Apple thing, which is 38th, you said? I think it's 35. 35. It would be 38 after 10% tax. I yeah. think it's another $500, $700 on top of that. Yeah. Pretty high ceiling. It's tough. Yeah. It's tough. Or the MetaQuest, which is like 200 bucks, I think. Did you... Or okay, three. let me ask your perspective specifically off of the fact that you... I'm just seeing this being like Google Glass again, right? Like some sort of way to augment your your sight in reality you ha you had google glass in your life around the time it was released didn't you yes uh, were you 10 years old how old were you when that thing came out oh fucking 11 so playing games was a big thing on the google glass like that was yeah it, it, well, it was just that's the only thing because i don't think we ever set it up because it was like this weird beta thing that al got or my dad got because he signed up or something like he was signed up for that but we got it and it You're had saying gaming pong. is only for beta males it's Gaming only, is only for, for beta betas? males. Only beta males with low Al's T. Not a beta, but. Al's not you know, I would not consider him <laughs> a, a beta male. Um, but yeah, that's the only thing I remember doing on it. Everything else kind of didn't work, I think was the whole point. It was okay. like too early for that stuff. Is that going to happen with the Apple Vision headset? I doubt it. I think before they didn't have the technology to do it like as efficiently. I mean, now they have full-blown screen. I, if Apple's going to do something, I think this was more like... Google did it, but it was like a beta testing thing. This is like, oh no, this is a fully fledged product we're going to release. It's got to be, not that I'm an Apple fanboy or anything, but usually they don't release stuff until it's pretty solid. I guess that's their whole point. Hence, they steal all of like Android's ideas and release it four years later under some new packaging. It's been 10 years, yeah, of um, the Oculus Rift and yeah. now the Meta Quest, whatever they call that thing, and different virtual realities being pushed to market. So they this is like in line with their pattern, like you're saying, yeah. like take an item that obviously is working that has market share and then take the market share, right? Do the best job of it. We're pretty much done here. I have to hurry up. I mentioned, I did do a teaser about cousins. Oh, yeah. Did you know that Andrew Huberman and Tom Segura are cousins? Really? It's kind of mind melting, right? A little. Anyway, wait, wait, just, who, wait, who is Andrew Huberman? Is that the? Uh... Oh, he's the uh, science guy. Yeah, okay, yeah, he's yeah. He's always yeah. like, you know, you must take if you want to take a pipette of yeah, pipette of. Yeah, he's yeah, got yeah. a black shirt on and a. Uh, okay, I was just beard. Okay, I, I had to be sure I was right. About Are you that familiar with him enough to comment on whether you're the Tom Secor or the <clears throat> Andrew Huberman? Do you know who is who? Uh, I would probably. Default to I'm probably most likely a Tom Segura in this situation. <laughs> I, 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 I I don't know enough about the other guy, Andrew Huberman. I've seen like a short probably of him, a YouTube short passing. I don't know much about him, but it seems like very, very logic, science, usually humor in... I mean, you got I, humor too. I don't also want to no, no, dilute I, it. No, but you, if we had to pick, I think it, it is that way. I think you're the Tom Segura. I mean, you're running the podcast here and I'm, I'm just spouting off at the mouth if we're just going about it that way. Now is actually a great time to mention that actually if you want to go out and get 20 minutes of sunlight exposure before viewing this next episode of the podcast, that would be best for your Please. norepinephrine and some of your basal ganglial cell functioning. Um, and I got to wrap this thing up because we're like right at the edge here. Okay, perfect, perfect. Man, final question. I got like five more questions. You might have to come back. I hope that's okay. Oh, no. I, I'd hate back to be home. back on this podcast. I, I, want, I want to. I want to. It's still kind of early in the year. I got to ask you this now because it's still February 2nd. Uh, do you have any predictions for 2024? Like what is happening this year? Um, a little soothsaying? 
one celebrity is going to die. That was, uh, let's see. I think, uh, wait, this already happened. What are you going to do about that? No, okay. <laughs> <laughs> what are you going to do to make your dreams come true, Austin? Um, so a uh, I'm going to be very uh, productive this year. That's what I'm going to predict. I'm going well, to do, I'm going to do go. a, I'm going to do a wholesome prediction. I am going to be very productive in my goals this year. Cool. What I about like you? It. What is your prediction? Uh, Stock market's going to crash horribly. <laughs> No, I'm. I got to get out of it. I, I'm trying to be more positive. Trying to be more productive. Um, I just put some money actually in the S and P 500, which oh, means nice. it probably will crash. Now, uh, I, I definitely am actually much more positive about economic state of affairs, especially since like inflation has gone down a little bit. And, yeah. Um, there's been some layoffs in the employment sector. Not that that's always a good thing, but I think just a, a balance is important. No, what is my prediction for this year? Uh, I'm actually getting married this year, so I'm going to say that the family unit is is going to make a wild comeback in America. Things are going to be less about, um, I don't know, their brands and, and their their individual business. And I think uh, families will make a comeback. Families are making a comeback. And 2024, I'm... the year of the family. <laughs> the year of the family, the year of the cousins. 2024 is the year of the cousins. Huberman, Segura, Segura, Harris, Harris smith Grant. Smith -Gratton. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, dude, thank you very much for coming on. Thank you for having me. We'll have to cut before the tape runs out. Yes. Bye, everyone. Tape is running out. Bye.